I know uh, you mentioned the St. Patrick's Day parade before, and I know you wrote about it in the book, but in terms of the Black Lives Matter protest, you said that it was sparked by the murder of George Floyd, but you kind of used the history of plagues, essentially, that it it was the anxiety around the pandemic itself, the lockdowns, the unemployment rate, you know, a sense of hopelessness. So that sort of drives human behaviour in that respect. And we had the same protests in Australia. I mean, is it impossible, regardless of how just the cause may be, to justify a protest during a pandemic? Well, okay. so I went on record during the protests in the summer of uh, 2020 as saying I thought it was irresponsible to assemble large groups of people when there was a serious contagion afoot. Now, since then, my laboratory has done some research. We released a preprint looking at the, for example, at voting behavior, the primaries that took place in March. And we found surprisingly that those elections turning out to vote did not seem to change the trajectory of the epidemic. Now, we we think that's for a number of reasons. People line up outside. Voting is a relatively quiet behavior. You're not on a screaming. You're indoors very briefly. Often they're big aerated spaces. Prevalence of the virus is relatively low at the time. So we have done, but I'm not prepared to discuss similar analyses with the protests, with uh, the BLM protests, also the Trump rallies we've looked at, and some other election-related behaviors in the last year in the United States to try to see, do these assemblages of people change the trajectory of the epidemic? So when when the BLM protests were taking place, I and a few other epidemiologists expressed the concern that it was irresponsible to encourage them. Yet other epidemiologists took on a different view And I found their position to be intellectually inconsistent. So, for example, they had opposed the two months earlier, the right-wing protests, for example, in the Wisconsin state legislature. And they had opposed, for example, Orthodox Jewish weddings that had large numbers of people in New York assembling. But then suddenly when the cause was different, they thought that was okay. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they said, well, those people were masked or they were outdoors. They had some reason. And other times they said, well, this cause is a health-related cause. So yes, we might lose some lives due to extra deaths from coronavirus, but we're going to save more lives by mitigating the adverse health implications of the racializing of our healthcare delivery system. But I did not find those arguments compelling. Now, I think that it's important to return to a different part of your question, which relates to what was going on. Also, what was going on with the January 6th right-wing riot at the nation's capital, where we had the insurrection of people storming the capital. A policeman was killed. I mean, it was and several other people died. As I discussed in the book, I think plagues are a time when people search for meaning. And it's not hard to imagine why. You know, when death is in the streets, you know, when a deadly contagion is walking the streets, When people are cooped up at home, it gives them time to reflect. What's the meaning of life? What kind of life do I want for myself? What kind of life do I want for the society that I inhabit? What kind of society is a good society? People ask these questions. And this search for meaning is reflected in many phenomena during times of plague for thousands of years. For example, a rise in religiosity is very typical. People become more religious during times of plague. And that happened in the United States during this plague, various Gallup and other surveys showed also changes people's occupational preferences. For example, we've seen a boom in applications to medical school and nursing school during this period. It also changes people's attitudes towards their occupation. For example, truckers suddenly see themselves as essential workers. They're performing a very important function in society, keeping goods moving when everyone else is stuck at home. And it gives them a kind of connection to their work and a meaning they didn't previously have. So my argument for the BLM protests were that they were driven not just by the history of such as it is of racialized police violence in our country, not just by the economic hardship that the pandemic imposed, as you mentioned, not just by the fact that people were at home and idle, but also by a search for meaning. People were trying to say, I care about a just society. Now, fast forward to the right-wing protests. On the right as well, we see something similar. What struck me about the storming of the Capitol is how few of those people made any attempt to conceal their identity. Hundreds are being arrested because they just stormed the Capitol. They thought what they were doing was good, right? They did not see themselves as undercutting the foundations of our democracy. I mean, they saw themselves as engaged in some kind of patriotic act. So I think the search for meaning has been affecting our political experience during this pandemic. (laughs) 